what are the six items that you should have on your battle belt? Hey guys, welcome back uh, to the 307 Project range. Man, I've gotten a ton of requests lately on uh, this, the battle belt, right? And how to set it up. And it's a valid question because, uh, you know, you can fit a lot of stuff on here um, and you can end up piling it full of a bunch of stuff that you might not really need. And you lug it around and it's heavy and uncomfortable. Um, and so, we're gonna talk about today how to set this up and the six, I would say, essential things that you want to put on your battle belt. Now, first of all, why do we want to have a battle belt built out like this? Well, it's because when we come out here to the range to shoot, it's so nice and convenient to have this thing right here that I can just pick up and bring out of the range with me and I know I'm gonna have everything I need to conduct training. All right, so convenience is, is probably the biggest reason to build one of these out. Uh, you know, you could have each of these individual six items in your range bag, and every time you got out of the range, you could take the time to put each of the items on the belt that you're wearing. That's a pain in the butt, man. It is, uh, it's super convenient to have this thing. Grab it, go to the range, you got everything you need. So that's why we have a battle belt. We're gonna talk about, again, what are the top six things? Where do you need to put them? And uh, why are they on here? All right, talk about the first one. Probably the most important part of your battle belt, I would say, is your, your holster, right? Or your holster setup. Um, so, the holster that I run on my battle belt is kind of a, a a mid-rise it's not really a drop leg holster but it just kind of is a it, it sits down i don't know i would say you know maybe three to four inches off the actual top of the belt um the reason i want something that's dropped down off the actual belt is because when i'm out on the range and i'm wearing body armor uh, training and kit if you have the holster mounted directly to the belt when you go and try to draw your pistol with body armor on, it's gonna get hung up on the body armor, right? So having that holster mounted down a little lower uh, on your thigh is gonna allow you to clear the holster with your pistol even when you're wearing body armor. So that's super, super important to have kind of a drop leg or at least a, a, a mid uh, holster on your battle belt. This bracket right here that drops the holster down off the belt this is made by True North. Um, I forget the website. I'll have Blake attach it in the links of uh, this episode right here. Other thing about the holster, we're not gonna review this holster. We're just, again, talking about the setup. Another thing I really like about uh, the way that we have this set up is we've got this QLS clip from Safari Land that mounts on to our holsters. Um, at least any holster that has that three screw kind of triangle looking setup, right? Uh, what this allows me to do is it allows me to switch multiple different holsters on and off this gun belt or this battle belt, all right? So I really love that clip system right there. If I didn't have this, we shoot a lot of different guns out here on the range. So if I didn't have this little clip system from Safari Land, Every time I wanted to shoot a different gun, I would have to actually take the screws out of this metal bracket and mount a whole new holster onto this rig right here, which would be a total pain in the butt. All right, so that's a sweet, sweet system. If you shoot multiple different pistols like we do out on the range, which I don't necessarily recommend, I'd probably recommend finding a pistol that you really like and just st sticking with it and shooting it's the same one all the time. Um, so that's my holster setup. I'll show you where this rides in a minute. I'll have uh, my friendly cameraman take a few pictures. Number one, your holster setup, all right? It's non-negotiable, it has to be right here. That's where it has to be. Moving on around, uh, the second, well, this is probably an order of importance here. The second most important thing other than having your weapon with you is having 
your IFAC, your individual first aid kit with you. Now, <clears throat> important part about the location of the IFAC, you need to be able to access this with both hands, all right? Uh, it should make sense if one of your hands goes down out on the range, you take a wound to your arm, a shot to the arm, or you screw your hand up and you've only got one left, you need to be able to get to it with either hand, all right? So that's super, super important. Um, you should feel naked on the range without an individual first aid kit. This little pouch right here was made by a company called London Bridge. London, London Bridge Trading Company. They're in Virginia Beach, Chesapeake area. They made a ton of gear for us in the SEAL teams. I don't even know if they make this pouch anymore, but I've had it, gosh, probably 10 years now. And all you do is simply pull that tab. This little cable comes out and then the IFAC is, I've got it vacuum, uh, vacuum sealed and it's in here. Um, you pull that, the IFAC comes out, you're good to go. So I'll show you where that rides, just kind of right there in the small of my back here in just a minute when we put the belt on. All right, that's number two, your IFAC. Number three is, well, this is a multi-tool. Uh, I think this thing is called the Leatherman Mutt, all right? Man, I'm always needing a, some kind of tool, a flathead screwdriver, a star bit, uh, a knife, uh, a punch. I'm always needing some random freaking tool out here on the range. This Leatherman Mutt has everything that you really need to mess around with the AR-15 style rifle um, and, and much, much more, all right? So, this thing has been super handy. I've had it for a few years now, and um, Blake keeps a, a really nice set of tools in his range bag, so if anything, if we run into anything that can't be done with this little Leatherman, we've got extra tools in the range bag. But nine times out of 10, this Leatherman Mutt is gonna take care of anything that we run into, sighting, sighting your rifle in, sighting your pistol in, uh, sighting any kind of optics, whatever it may be, right? disassembling the weapon, uh, clearing jams. This can be used for a ton of different reasons. So that's one is the holster, two is the IFAC, three is the Leatherman Mutt, four is this thing right here. Uh, this is just simply a dump pouch, all right? Nothing important about it. It's just uh, extra pouch that I have on here. I actually made this pouch. I sewed this with an old sewing machine that I had a long time ago. In here, I just keep, um, say, some extra mags. Um, I keep a little notepad, pen and paper. Uh, I've got a pair of trauma shears in here right now. Um, but it's just a dump pouch. It's just a pouch to keep random crap, to keep stuff out of your pockets. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm out on the range and I'm shooting and I'm, I'm you know, picking up empty mags off the ground and sticking them in my pocket, it just gets uncomfortable, especially if you're shooting and moving and having to run around. So I'd rather have all that stuff in this dump pouch. It's just like kind of a, um, a trash can, garbage, all your extra stuff in that dump pouch. It's super important, super convenient. All right, now something that's way more important than the dump pouch is this right here. This is a tourniquet. Um, so I have my tourniquet in a separate pouch. It's not in my actual IFAC pouch. It's actually in a much more accessible location. I can look down and see it. Um, and I have the tourniquet in a pouch because I think that you need to keep the tourniquet protected. The tourniquet has uh, Velcro on it and it's pretty important for that Velcro to stay nice and clean uh, for the tourniquet to work properly. You'll see a lot of people have the tourniquet just kind of, I mean, guys have them rubber banded onto their belt, rubber banded onto the butt stalk of their weapon. Uh, that's fine and dandy, but you get out and it's wet and nasty and muddy and dusty and uh, you can really compromise the function of your tourniquet if you don't have it in the pouch. This was made specifically for a tourniquet. You just grab this tab right here, pull it open, and you have access to your tourniquet right there. It's a cat tourniquet is what I use. Um, so really great pouch and we'll show you where this rides when I put the belt on later. Just forward of the tourniquet, we got two mag pouches. Uh, I believe that two mag pouches, pistol mag pouches are sufficient. 
uh, yeah, that's what I run out on the range. I always have two mag pouches and one mag in the gun. So I want to have access to three magazines. Uh, make sure your mag pouches have some sort of retention to hold the magazines in there. And um, yeah, it's non-negotiable where they're at. They kind of have to be right here to do quick mag changes. So that is the six components of a complete battle belt, in my opinion. You know, you could, uh, you could maybe pile a thing or two else on here. A lot of people like to keep rifle mags on their, on their battle belt. Uh, I'm not all about that. I think if I'm shooting rifle and I need multiple mags, I'm gonna have a set of H gear on. I'm gonna have some sort of chest rig to hold those mags up here on my chest and not on my belt. Um, but yeah, holster setup again with the QLS thingy from Safari Land so we can exchange multiple holsters that's kind of dropped down off the belt so we can draw our weapon and clear the holster with our kit on. We've got our IFAC individual first aid kit needs to be accessible with both hands. We've got our Leatherman Mutt to clear any crap that we got going on with our guns. Uh, it's got a punch, it's got screwdrivers, it's got everything you need to take care of most problems. We've got a simple little dump pouch, we've got our tourniquet, and we've got our mag pouches here. Now, one part of, of the battle belt that is probably overlooked mo m by many people is this component right here, all right? This is the inner belt, all right? So this is the part of the belt that you actually, if I had pants on right now, you put the inner belt through the belt loops of your pants, right? So this goes through the belt loops of the pants. It goes right here, just like that. And then your battle belt's gonna have Velcro on the inside of it. Now this Velcro, this is the loop. Uh, it mates up with the hook of your inner belt and it keeps this thing on your hips where you want it to be, all right? If you don't wear an inner belt with this battle belt, it's not gonna work, man. This thing's pretty heavy, all right? So if you don't wear this inner belt with the battle belt, it's gonna slide down or ride up on your torso and it's gonna be uncomfortable as crap. It's not gonna stay in the right place. You want the belt to stay in the same place all the time uh, because, well, one, because of your draw, your draw stroke and also on your mag changes you want everything to be in the same place at all times you don't want that thing sometimes to be way up here sometimes to be way down here and sometimes to be twisted like this all right so the inner belt is super important i'll put this thing on and uh, let blake get a few pictures or get a little pan around of where all this stuff sits All right, guys, so that's the battle belt and the six components to make it an effective setup out on the range. We have got some new systems coming, by the way, so we'll continue to keep you updated on uh, our gun belt setup as it evolves and we make it better and better and better. Hope that gets you going, though, guys. Really important piece of gear. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and uh, drop a comment if you do something different with your gun belt. We want to hear from you. Enough said.